The main thing about fall harvest is uh, they get the elders like to teach the younger generation like how to clean fish and how to cut meat. Each elder will be put to teach what that elder knows. Huh? Some will do medicine walk and some will do beading and some will do uh, how to cut deer meat and how to make the pemmican. You have to cut it a certain way. If you have a sharp knife, you just skin it like that. My knife is so short. That's a good part of the deer. What part is that again? That's a uh, hind quarter. The hind quarter. Yeah. We we bag them and we put them in a freezer for for the people uh, <laughs> to uh, to live on during the winter winter months. It's important uh, to teach our uh, younger generation so they can preserve preserve uh, their their food so they can pass it on to their kids too. But you learned how to do this a long time ago, eh? Oh yeah, this this part, uh, my grandma taught me how to do it. Oh, my mom tried to teach me, but I was too grossed out. Oh. <laughs> to go near the, the dead uh, the deer or the oh. meat, you know, I couldn't watch. I grew up on a reserve. Probably I was born on a reserve too because uh, my grandma was a midwife. My grandma taught me everything that I, I know, like how to cut fish, how to cut meat, and how to tend to a garden. Mostly I was raised by uh, my grandma. When my grandpa died, I had to help her out in everyday chores. And I think when they started taking the kids away from the reserve to take them to residential schools, my grandma was hiding me. I never was caught. So I was, I was never in a residential school. So I was thankful for, for my grandma for keeping me away from those people that took away the uh, kids away from the reserve. It was a cycle. Uh, it seems like the way my parents were uh, abusing alcohol, you know, I was like that too. I didn't like that. I didn't, I didn't like that kind of life. And something happened, supernatural. And that's when I stopped drinking altogether. Then we moved to Winnipeg and get uh, into the right uh, teachings about, about God and stuff like that. And then finally, the Lord spoke to me to come back home to Show Lake. Then I was thinking, no way, I don't want to go back home. Because, you know, those were hardships. The hardships about living on a reserve, about going back and forth on ice or water, you know, a freeze up time in the fall or in the springtime. Those were awful because I fell in once too. I fell in the water. I was with my uh, my uh, my younger brother. We were pushing a boat to go across the store. And then about not even halfway, about a quarter of a ways, we were off the shore. And here I went to. <laughs> I just fell in the 
in the water just like a, a rock. So I just had to hold on to the boat for dear life. <laughs> that was a close call that day. There was other people that lost their lives because of ice conditions. And their canoes tip over and drown, stuff like that. It was awful. Awful to lose someone like that. And now look at our Freedom Road. Oh my God, <laughs> that really did something to me. That's something, really something, something beautiful to get the road going. Yeah, we, we worked as a community. The last day we always have a feast. So all the workers that you see here, uh, they'll be cooking for the whole feast. Make it biotic. Yeah. You'll see a lot of food there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exciting. It seems like there's more meat there to be cooked. <laughs> like uh, what we're doing here, laughing and joking and all that. <laughs> like I'm always happy to, to participate in it because it's what it's all about so we can uh, pass it on to the generations to come. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what it's all about. My dad, my mom, the, they started me off when I was started uh, when I was about five six years old with uh, just a safety pin and uh, and uh, thread from the shoreline where I was standing. I used to just to throw that hook on, uh, on the water. And then, well, that's where when I started fishing at an early age, and it's not a sport to me. Like I, I do it for consumption. Like. Uh, when people ask me to get some walleyes for them, I, I will, I'll get them. And I feed the, the community members, or whatever I catch, and I'll try and feed the people. Because a lot of people, some of the older people that they can go out fishing, and those are the ones that we, we try to provide eh? the, the fish for them. I remember I used to see people, elders, used to check the ice over here. Then that's why I picked it up, take the measure, measurement stick with me and, and make sure it's safe for everybody to, to drive. I remember back in the old, the old days when we used to have ice freezing up, we used to carry uh, the canoes out. Like there were about four or five of us maybe dragging the canoe across the ice here. Just to just to get across. I'm hooked on the minnow, then we're ready. See if we catch something. Hopefully a walleye. It's probably not that deep too. It must be about 15, 12, 12, 12 feet, 12 to 15 feet. There's one time the ice was freezing or freezing up already. And me and my wife, we started walking across and I don't know how thick the ice was then, maybe an inch. But you could just hear the ice cracking. My wife was maybe about 10, 15 feet away. And all of a sudden I heard that she, she fell through the ice. And I knew I had to help her, I had to pull her out. And there's a lot of people like that and stories around the community that, that went through like that, the people falling through the ice. And we barely made it that, that evening. We, we just crawled across this ice here. 
we crawled all the way. That was, that was, I don't know, it's scary for us that night. That's the struggles we have during the freeze up. We have to walk across to get home. That was before we had the, we had the Freedom Road. The road is good. It's, it's, it's all good. It's a little walleye. That's the one that's been stealing my other two minnows. <laughs> oh, I missed it. Ha, ha, ha.